Hi, this is Stephen Roselle. I'm Solution Specialist with Autodesk, and I'm going to do a quick kind of tutorial on how to go about editing existing blend shapes. So, what we have here is uh, a source object, um, our, our primary object character, and then here we have all of our various blend shapes, uh, which are just uh, sculpt or, or modified versions of that mesh. Uh, so, I'm not going to go over blend shapes, everybody probably knows what a blend shape is. I'm just going to create one really quickly. So I'm going to create deformers, create blend shape, and that will give me a blend shape node. And then at, with that with that blend shape node, I can actually go in and begin to position and pose my character into these various um, expressions. So I've got forehead controls, I've got mouth controls, I've got uh, like an open mouth kind of thing. And I can combine these together into multiple expressions, but that's pretty straightforward. So now I want to talk about what I could do to actually go in and edit these. So there's one way uh, of working, which basically is topology based. So I'm going to start with a change to the topology. So let's say that an art director comes to me and says, we really need to add a little bit more articulation in the mouth. So I want you to go in and add some detail there so that we can add more expressions or, or refine the expressions. So I'm going to go into my Insert Edge Loop tool, and for the lips here, I'm going to go into multi-split mode, and then I'm going to apply a force split and drop that down. Now I'm going to go in and kind of shuffle around the, the layout here. So I'm going to grab this edge loop here. I'll go into my Slide Edge tool, and I'll just kind of slide that out a little bit, and then I'll step over to the next edge just using my arrow keys, and I'll just kind of push that edge out a little bit. And I'm just basically kind of redistributing the the layout of my edges nothing fancy and the other thing I might want to do is just kind of push this uh, this lip out a little bit just to add a little bit of definition so if I hold my middle mouse button I can actually slide not along the existing edges but push it out along the normals and then likewise I want to go in and add a bit of a creasing effect there so I have some definition to the lip so I'm going to go in and apply a soften or rather a harden edge so that's probably a little extreme but you get the basic idea I actually uh, probably went a little too far with that. Let's actually go back into my push tool and kind of push that back just a little bit so it's not quite so extreme. There we go. It looks a little bit better. So now I've basically gone in and I've added edges, which has changed the topology. I've added some some hard hardness to those edges. I've shifted the layout of those edges around. So what I want to do now is have that propagate out to all the other uh, targets. So if you look here, a frame in on that. You can see there that the lips are still soft and gooey just like they were before. So let's pull in, grab this guy, and I'm just going to use a simple tool called Bake Topology uh, sorry, Bake uh, Topology to Targets. So if you go under Edit Deformers Blend Shape, I'll say Bake Topology to Targets, and it'll go through one by one, and it will transfer those topology changes, which you can see right here. So you see the change to the number of edges, uh, edge loops in the lip, and then also the uh, the hardness around the edge. So you see it there as well, and you see it on all of these others. So that's pretty straightforward. But what if you needed to actually just go in and make a more of a form change or you know the actual shape as opposed to the topology? So let's use uh, a couple of different edits here. So let's say, I, for whatever reason, our director again comes to me and says, yeah, those ears are great, but they're not quite pointy enough. I'm going to go in and just use my soft select tool and turn on reflection just to grab those ears and kind of pull them out and make them nice and pointy. Uh, and then I might want to go in and make some other changes. Let's take the, the, the cheeks here and kind of push those in. Let's take the, the uh, jawline and kind of bring that out. Let's actually even go a little further here with the chin, maybe add kind of a little bit of a dimple effect to the chin, scale that out. Again, I'm just using a standard soft select for this. Let's grab the bridge of the nose. I'll turn off my reflection here and just come around and say pull the nose out here and maybe grab the nose there and kind of pull that up and really just really change the shape. So again, I've made a variety of changes. So now I want to basically propagate those out to the, the same uh, targets in, in a similar way that I did before. But the problem is if I just select this mesh and if I go into that same tool, Blend shapes, bake topology to targets. It's going to process, and then it's going to basically do nothing. So you'll notice that none of those changes that I made got propagated out. So I'm going to go back a couple of steps here, 
And what I want to show you is two things. One is if you go to this little UI right here, inputs unselected, then you can bring up all the nodes that are affecting this object. So I've got two nodes. I've got the blend shape and I've got the tweak node. The tweak node is actually what is storing the, the offsets uh, that I made. So this stores just simple offsets for the vertices, otherwise known as the tweaks. Um, problem is that's in the wrong order, basically. That needs to be above the blend shape in order to get baked in. That's what, problem one. Problem two is that this tool looks for topology changes, and if it doesn't find topology changes, then it doesn't do any baking. So these are actually just edits to the existing mesh, but they're not changing the, the topology. In other words, they're not adding or removing vertices. So um, one way to trick this tool into thinking the topology has changed is to simply add a, an edit. So this could be as simple as um, something like a move component, which adds a construction history node, but it doesn't actually necessarily need to do anything. So if you take a vertice here, and you just go in and you apply transform component, what that will do is it will create a poly move vertex node. Now I don't actually have to move it, all it did is it created that node, but it didn't actually do anything. So now what I want to do is you want to make sure you have your object selected. It's automatically going to recognize that I've made up a poly edit. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to take this tweak node and I want to move it above the blend shape node. So I basically want to take, the, actually I have to do it the other way around, take the blend shape node and drop it down below the tweak node. So again, make sure this guy's selected, drop your blend shape down to the lowest uh, you know, area basically, at the bottom of the list. And now we come in here under edit deformers, blend shape, bake topology to targets, it'll process that, and bam, there are all my changes. So pretty straightforward. Once you understand how this works, it's really pretty easy. Again, if I wanted to, to do this all over again, let's say I decide I want to give them a pointy head, I'll come in here, I'll grab this vertice. There we go, scale that up. I'm going to give them a nice pointy head here. I'm going to go back in, go up to my inputs, look at my inputs, and again, I, I don't have that history node in there anymore, so all I have to do is just come in here grab a, a simple vertex and just apply a transform component. All that does is it creates the history node that I need. I've already reordered the tweak node, so that shouldn't be a problem. So now if I select the mesh, you gotta make sure you have the mesh selected, go into edit mesh, or edit deformers blend shape, bake topology to targets, that'll process that, and there's the edit that I made. So again, two steps. You have to reorder the inputs and make sure that the blend node, node is below your tweak node, and you have to add a simple move component uh, or, or poly move vertex uh, node in your history, and this tool will work like a charm. So pretty straightforward, a little tricky. If you didn't know how to do that otherwise, um, you might bang your head against the wall trying to figure it out, but now you know. So hopefully you can use that at some point in the future. So that wraps it up. Uh, um, thanks for your time.